2021 has been a massive, massive year for blockchain adoption. We've seen an explosion in the overall crypto megatrend, as well as insane growth in all these smaller trends inside of crypto, like NFTs, you know, gaming, DeFi, and a whole lot more. And I believe the stage is set for another massive year in 2022. And in this video, I want to talk about some of my top predictions for you know the crypto, blockchain, Web 3.0 space, whatever you want to call it, for 2022. I'm going to talk about that as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis you know, watches this space daily, what I think is going to happen, you know, in this coming year. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about some of my top predictions for the blockchain space in 2022. And I'm actually going to start off by looking at my predictions from last year that I made in about January of 2021 and see, you know, what actually came true, like how accurate were they, okay? So I'm actually going to pull this video that I was, you know, watching here. And so some of my top predictions from last year were the following. So number one was that EIP-1559 would go live. This is where we're burning ETH whenever new transactions are created. So that happened. Another prediction was that we'd hit $100 million of TVL and DeFi protocols. That happened. That Ethereum would outperform Bitcoin. That happened. And another one is that we'd see, you know, wide layer two adoption. So kind of. We're starting to see layer two adoption, but not as wide as I would have liked to have hoped. So that's what happened last year. Predictions are pretty good for the most part. So let's see what I think is going to happen in 2022. All right. So my... First prediction for 2022 is that the Ethereum 2.0 merge is going to happen, okay? So what does this mean and why is it really important for the blockchain space and why do I think it's actually going to, to take place? So a lot of the really meaningful innovation that's happening in the crypto space is happening on top of the Ethereum platform. Whenever you see a lot of these trends within crypto, a lot of them come from the Ethereum platform in the first place. Things like DeFi, NFTs, ERC-20 tokens. And Ethereum is a leader in innovation for you know this modular blockchain future where we build blockchains in multiple layers. It has a massive market share on the number of actual blockchain users. And the, and the merge on the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap is taking Ethereum and moving it from its you know current state from ETH 1.0 to ETH 2.0, because if you ever used Ethereum, you might think it's kind of slow, it's kind of expensive. Well, part of fixing that problem is this long-term move towards Ethereum 2.0. And right now we're in a multi-phase rollout. So we have ETH 2.0 that's currently exists right now in something called the Beacon Chain, which is a separate blockchain that exists side by side with the Ethereum that you know and use today. Because if you're using Ethereum now, you're using Ethereum 1.0. And so the merge is when we basically take this Ethereum 2.0 we've built over here on the side and merge it back into Ethereum 1.0 and we actually turn on proof of stake. So the miners are going to get replaced by validators. And Ethereum itself will now become a staking asset where you can lock it up in the network and earn a passive income reward uh, for participating in you know, the consensus algorithm that the blockchain uses. And so this is huge for the Ethereum roadmap long term. It gives people confidence in what Ether's grand vision is and the ability to coordinate this in a decentralized way rather than just having like a company that creates a blockchain that other people use, okay? The other big reason it's super important is because this is going to dramatically change the economics of ETH, the asset itself, so the cryptocurrency, because right now that we've had EIP-1559 go live in 2021, one of the predictions I made last year, so we're burning ETH and new transactions are created, and a lot of people talk about ETH becoming deflationary, but ETH is not necessarily deflationary all the time right now. It can have periods of deflationary activity, like you see in this website, ultrasound.money. Oh, uh, you see deflationary blocks here like 2.0 ETH. Anytime it exceeds that amount, that's deflationary. But in order for ETH to become net deflationary, uh, that's what's going to happen after the ETH 2.0 merge happens, which I predict is going to happen next year, because it reduces the ETH issuance three times. They call it the triple halving. So it goes from, uh, you know, 4% to 2% to 1% to half a percent, okay? And that's how much ETH is getting issued by the blockchain. And you can see here, you can actually visualize on this website if you click simulate merge at the current network activity levels. That means ETH would be minus 1% inflationary or about my, you know, about 2% deflationary on an annual basis. All right, so my next prediction is kind of piggybacking off a prediction that I made last year is that I do think that we will see wide layer two adoption for Ethereum layer twos in 2022. Okay, I think I may have said 2020. I might get my years mixed up here, but if I'm about predictions, I'm always talking about the future. Okay, so what is a layer two in case you're, you know, you're new, you don't understand. Uh, that's okay. Everybody starts from somewhere. 
So basically, a layer two, the biggest complaint about Ethereum is too slow, it's too expensive to use. I explained a minute ago that Ethereum 2.0, the long-term roadmap is part of fixing that problem, particularly with sharding, which is much later. Um, but right now, we don't have to wait for all that to happen. We can get that benefit with layer two scaling solutions on top of Ethereum, particularly around roll-up-based solutions like Optimism, Optimistic Rollups, Arbitrum, Zero Knowledge Rollups, ZK Sync, all that type of stuff. I don't want to overwhelm these too many details, but we can already see this happening now. Layer twos are out there in the wild. They're being used, but I would not call them widely used yet. That was my prediction from last year, but my prediction for 2022 is that we will see wide adoption, okay? And we can see transactions getting cheaper and faster on top of Ethereum by using these layer two environments, but basically taking the activity, putting it in a second environment, and then the result of that activity being settled back on the main Ethereum chain itself. What would, how would I define wide you know, uh, adoption. So it's hard to say for sure, but, you know, some meaningful metrics that I would see would be like, uh, you know, exchanges supporting, um, you know, Ethereum layer two withdrawals. So if you wanted to withdraw assets, you could do it. Uh, maybe some of these popular layer twos that the TVL inside these layer twos would, you know, increase dramatically. You know, TVL is not a perfect metric for adoption, but it's something. But another way of looking at this is kind of just like anecdotal evidence is like, do you use layer twos for the majority of your activity of Ethereum usage? Do we see lots of applications on there? Do you know other people who are doing this? Is this becoming a common standard for Ethereum interactions? So to kind of look at this in a multifaceted way, ultimately it's subjective. It's hard to say this is the exact metric that it needs to hit, but that's something that I would, you know, consider wide adoption. All right, so my next prediction for 2022 is that Ethereum will continue to outperform Bitcoin, okay? And I know some people are sitting around saying like, duh, of course that's going to happen. But um, this is not this is something you can't take for granted, especially for newcomers in this space who don't understand sort of like how these markets move and understand, you know, upside potential. So we've seen Ethereum outperform Bitcoin in 2021, and I expect that it's going to continue to happen in 2022. Now, a sub point under this is will Ethereum flip Bitcoin in 2022? OK, so I'm not going to definitively say whether that's going to happen or not. But I do think about this in terms of, uh, you know, probability. But the whole idea is like, can Ethereum become the number one cryptocurrency by market cap on a website like CoinGecko.com or, you know, CoinMarketCap? Well, what I'll say is this. I do think it's possible. OK, I'm not going to say it's going to happen. I'm not going to include it in my list of predictions. But I do think it's possible because of more you can do with Ether over something like Bitcoin. You can stake it. You can use it in DeFi. You can buy NFTs with it. And you can use it on layer twos. There's all this demand for blockchain technology that's, you know, happening on top of the Ethereum platform. And Ether, the asset itself, is, you know, tightly integrated into that. And so it stands to reason that you could have more demand for Ether, which could ultimately cause the market cap to become higher than Bitcoins, especially once we have the merge happen and this issuance for ETH becomes, you know, deflationary. Those are my top three predictions that I think I have the most confidence in, okay, that are the most likely to happen. Now, let's talk about, because you always think about the extension of likelihood, like nobody exactly knows for sure what's going to happen with their predictions. We did a pretty good job last year. So let's, you know, just try to be accurate with, with our prediction for 2022. But let's talk about two more that I think are, you know, probably going to happen. But I'm not going to like take these to the bank. You know, none of these predictions are financial advice. And I definitely would not count these next two as financial advice either or any kind of like thing to just, you know, bank your future on. But let's let's just let's put them on the record and then we can come back and revisit this video at the end of 2022 and see if we're right. So number one is I think that we will see a spot uh, ETF approval for Bitcoin in 2022. And again, I keep thinking I keep thinking I say 2021 when I mean 2022. But I'm, I, everything I'm talking about the future is 2022. And so why is this important? Well, basically, you know, we have seen a, you know, futures approval for Bitcoin ETF in the United States in 2021. I mean, actually this year, but I think a spot ETF is, is more important. And we just saw testimony before Congress about, you know, basically we're talking about how the United States is behind many other countries in this and really putting pressure on the U.S. to actually keep up with the rest of the world. Because if we lag behind on innovation for crypto in the United States, then really we're we're underperforming what we could be. And we talked about this specifically around uh, crypto or Bitcoin ETFs and that the consequence of not doing this is that anybody who creates this type of stuff is really just pushing innovation offshore. It's pushing you know, you're losing out on tax revenue, you know, GDP for people who create services around this. It's just a net negative for the U.S. in many ways. And I think this can really reach a tipping point in 2022 where we can finally see approval for this type of thing. We have tons of applications, um, you know, in the queue to do this. And if it's not in 2022, then maybe it's shortly after. All right. And so my last prediction is this. 
Now, I'm not exactly going to take this one to the bank, but I think this is very possible in 2022, which is that the metaverse is going to go mainstream. Okay, we've seen lots of people put their name in the hat to jump on this metaverse trend. We've seen Facebook rebrand their entire company as Meta to focus on becoming a metaverse company. And so that's a huge signal that, you know, they're going to launch into this full force. We've seen other companies like, you know, Square rebrand a block, citing blockchain as part of this, and a lot more. In my opinion, this was like a tidal wave. And you have all these people who are basically racing in to try to control and influence the metaverse. And it's going to happen from a big sort of corporate side. And it's probably also going to happen from a grassroots, more decentralized side. And we don't actually know what the future that's going to look like just yet. Well, how would I define that? Well, again, this is hard to do. We're talking about like wide layer two adoption. Like I don't want to put a, a metric out there because I don't know how a single metric is going to necessarily capture this very well. But it would kind of look like Metaverse doing something like NFTs did this year, okay? Where basically it was an idea. There were people who were doing it. That's kind of what's happening in Metaverse right now. There's, there's, It's an idea. There's already a, examples of Metaverse projects. They're kind of early. They sort of feel like toys. That's kind of how NFTs felt. But I think we're going to have some sort of big boom moment where people from the outside, not just in crypto, you know, start using this stuff and it creates a tidal wave, kind of a big hype cycle. And that the usage of those actual things bubbles up into the mainstream media, gets attention where I personally hear people who are, you know, not involved in crypto are asking me like, hey, what's this metaverse thing? That's already happening, but they're just talking about the ideas that are coming. They're not talking about people like witnessing people using it. And that's really what I mean by you know, metaverse going mainstream. I don't necessarily mean mass adoption, but mainstream in the way where actual metaverse use cases kind of have that that sort of bubbling up point. All right, so this is some of my top predictions for the crypto, blockchain, web 3.0 space, whatever you want to call it for 2022. So let me know what you think down in the description below. Are these predictions good? Are some of these things never going to happen? Is there something that you think is definitely going to happen that I totally missed inside this list? There's lots of things that I think are, you know, maybe or probably didn't quite make the list but these are things i have a higher higher degree of confidence in so that's all i got for today as always smash that like button down below for the youtube algorithm subscribe to this channel if you haven't already that really helps videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain and if you're as fascinated with this technology as i am you want to get your hands dirty how can you get started today well you can go to my youtube homepage. you can find any of my free courses there they like udemy courses but they're totally free and if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.